What up everybody and welcome back to my channel. This of course will be a review as of the title of Dune, the movie that just came out not too long ago. Um, this will also be filled with spoilers. I went into this movie pretty much kind of blind a little bit. Um, I had heard, I did a little bit of research, so I understand that this movie is based off of the book Dune, which is off of, off of a series of Dune books. Um, and that these books essentially were the catalyst, you know, or the inspiration for Star Wars, of George Lucas's Star Wars. Um, which when I heard that, it kind of worried me a little bit because I'm never, I've never been a big fan of Star Wars. I don't know what it is. I've watched them, or at least most of them. I didn't watch this last trilogy or series all the way through because um, it, it just didn't interest me. Um, but yeah, I've watched them. They've just never captivated me. I just, there was always just, a, I, I don't know, it's just a disconnect for me. So that kind of made me a little bit nervous in going into the Dune movie because I was interested in the movie just for based off the previews. And so I was like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, but then, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> but I went and saw it anyway. I went and saw it anyway. I know people had advised like go and see it on the biggest screen ever because the cinematography is beautiful and it is, it is gorgeous. This movie, um, is actually directed by Denis Villeneuve, or is it Villeneuve? I don't know if I know if he's a he's French, so I don't know if it's Villeneuve or Villeneuve or something like that. But hopefully, I'm not like butchering his name. Um, but he has done movies such as like Sicario, I think it's his mo Sicario and Arrival are one of are some of his most notable movies. So one thing I want to say about the cinematography, other than this, just that it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> but the scale of the scenes and the scale of the landscapes, like it really pushes you forward. Like if you are into just like beautifully, gorgeously shot films like I am, you'll just be captivated by it. Like you could honestly, I could have put the, I could have put the mo movie on mute and been very captivated by just the scenery and the scale of the shots. One thing I really love that he did in here though was also play with this idea of lightness and darkness, like these light tones and dark tones um, and like putting up like the contrast between the two. There's scenes in which like these pale white, you know, face skin people are, <laughs> and it's the house of our, of Harkonnens. Um, they are up against like this black backdrop and it just looks very ominous and scary, but it's also very just captivating and gorgeous at the same time. Um, I really love all the shots like this lightness and darkness. And I think that's one thing that I think um, this movie gets right that Star Wars gets wrong. So Star Wars and the in the Star Wars sort of saga trilogies, they make all of these sort of allusions to like, you know, going to the dark side and da 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 da, da the light versus the dark. They sort of say these things over and over again, this idea of light versus darkness. But I I think that's one issue with that I always had with Star Wars is I just never felt it. I never felt the lightness or the darkness. I just heard them say light and dark, light, dark, light, dark, but I never really felt what that meant. And I feel like in this one, Dennis is like taking those, those same concepts, but not saying them. He's not gonna have the character speak them. He's just going to have the actual scenery speak these things. So like, it's almost like the darkness is shaping people as you see it sort of, you know, swoosh and, you know, uh, you know, sort of encapsulate the characters or the lightness also encapsulating and surrounding the characters. It's a beautiful scene um, in the sand uh, deserts on the planet Dune, right? Um, where, or Arrakis, right? Arrakis, which is like the, the, the I guess the nickname is Dune. Um, and there's these like great scenes of like this dust that is like sparkly and glittery and completely consuming and encapsulating people and our main character. And it's like, it's literally the light and dark is literally moving and like, you know, it's almost they it's almost like they are characters within the movie itself. In this movie, I feel the light and I feel the darkness. 
you know, trying to fight for like control and balance as also our characters, you know, and these different societies and different like nations or different even planets um, are fight, you know, these people on these different planets are fighting for like control and power as well, which I, I really loved how that all sort of comes together. I felt like the one of the main uh, criticisms I hear about this movie is that the movie takes a long time for anything to happen, for any like major action to happen. And I don't mind that at all, actually, in this movie. I actually really enjoyed learning the backstory and learning the politics and learning the dynamics of what this world sort of is or what this universe sort of is. You know, it takes like an hour and a half for there to be any real action within um, the film. But also, I feel like I enjoyed learning the 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 basics and the foundation of the of the uh, you know just of the world of the universe that we're that Dennis is building and also I feel like Dennis does a good job of creating tension um with the visions of you know even though nothing's happening it feels like something's always happening even though it's, there's nothing going on because the visions that you know our main character Paul is happening clearly are foreshadowing and leading us down this road of like okay and building and building and building this tension you know Zendaya seeing Zendaya constantly throughout this like hour and a half you know portion of the film this first half of the portion of the film is like building this tension of something to come something is coming something is coming you know um and yeah yeah so even though nothing is happening literally you you're still moving forward. You know, there's still a forward motion going on that I really enjoyed as well. I think one thing that also Dennis is also really good at, um, Dennis Villeneuve is also really good at, is setting up expectations only to under undercut them in the end. Um, so throughout the entirety of the movie, you know, I, th I thought that one thing that I thought was really interesting was that I learned um, over the course of it was just that, you know, Paul's mom is not the queen of the house of um, Atreides. Um, so she sort of, you know, we sort of see Paul's mom, which I forget her name. Um, she's always standing by. I think her name, his name is Laetus or Laetus or something like that, um, who is sort of like the king, you know, ruler of House of Atreides. And like all the, they have, I guess these have, they have these in this universe, in this world, in, these, in this universe, like these different worlds are kind of based off of like different houses, almost like, like Hogwarts houses, like House of Huff, Hufflepuff or something like that, <laughs> or Gryffindor. And it's like this planet here is like the House of Atreides. This planet here is the House of Harkonnen. We learned that uh, the House of Harkonnen and also the Imperial or the um, Emperor of the Universe we, which, which, you know, which we never see. We never see the emperor. He's just sort of this ominous figure that is talked about in the background that they are kind of jealous of the uh, fame and um, recognition that the Atreides is accumulating across the universe. Like they're gaining a lot of favor amongst the different houses slash planets. And they devise this plan to essentially get rid of them um, Atreides and Paul's family, essentially, um, by sending them to Dune, by ordering them to go to Dune to, like, take their turn and trying to, like, cultivate and sort of, um, steal the resources from Dune, this dust that helps power, you know, ships so that, you know, they can, of course, travel, you know, do in this interstellar travel. Um, it's the most sort of powerful, it's sort of said that it's the most powerful, um mineral uh that exists in the universe and so they use it constantly they use that a lot of that dust um which they do not have a right to you know there this is this is essentially a colonialist <laughs> an imperialist sort of narrative subtext going on here not even a subtext it's just it's the text uh <laughs> paul's family of house of atreides is sent to pretty much call it they're the next colonizers up on the list well they're not but the you know emperor of the universe and also house of harkin and devises plan to get rid of them to make them vulnerable so they can then wipe them out on the planet of dune 
um, and also just sort of X out the competition um, because they feel threatened um, by their, you know, sort of accumulated like favor they are gaining with other houses in the universe which i un i really loved all of that political stuff and all of that political ground i know a lot of people didn't appreciate it. they want to get straight to like let's start fighting can i see some action can i do this you know it's like people don't like appreciate <laughs> I hate to say that people don't appreciate like story building anymore, but like when you're dealing with something as vast as like a universe, I understand why Dennis Villeneuve sort of feels like Villeneuve, you know, he feels like I have to take, I need to take time because first of all, there's a whole group of, there's whole, like people have, a whole lot of people have not read Dune. Like Dune is a very like niche thing you know, um, that is known to a sort of very small subsection <laughs> of like the literary nerd sci-fi world, right? You know, this is, and I'm making this movie for the masses and I want them to understand what's going on. I understand his move to like, let's story build. I think I was saying this before, but Denis Villeneuve seems to also like to set up expectations only to undercut them at the end for it to or not undercut them but flip them at the end i think he does this really well countless times within the movie um one being i'm just going to give one uh we see paul's mom you know paul's mom is sort of standing off to the side constantly she's always in the shadows which i think is very symbolic that she works within the shadows da, 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 da. you know she works within the darkness um <laughs> uh I, I she's always sort of standing off to the side of his father um who is like leatus i think that's the name latus or something like that um and of course, Paul is the next heir to the throne of the House of Atreides. And his mother is always there. And you just sort of assume, I just assume that she was queen. You know, I assume that she was, you know, his, you know, his queen, um, his sort of right hand. And then later on in the movie, almost like two hours and a half an hour, two hours in, we learned that actually, no, she's not the queen. She's actually like his side piece. And I was like, whoa, whoa. You know, I think uh, Latus at one point, they're laying in the bed together and she's like rubbing his head, trying to calm him down because he's had a stressful day and trying to, because he knows that something is up with, you know, the emperor. He knows that like, you know, he feels like, you know, there's some dirty politics going on to set them up a little bit um, by placing them on planet Dune. And, you know, he's had a stressful day and she's rubbing his head and everything. And she, you know, he's like, you know, I should have married you. And I was like, whoa. So then where's the wife? But the fact that we never saw a wife or that a wife was never mentioned ever. Uh, I feel like that was a little bit of a, or that maybe he never married her. Maybe he never married at all. Um, I mean, Paul seems to be his only child. I would, maybe he's his only child. I think he was the only child. Um, so maybe that's why, but yeah, I just find that, I found that very interesting that she was actually a concubine or, you know, and not, a, and not the queen, you know, so the mother also works for like this witch coven type of group of women. Um, there's like this high priestess woman, um, and they work with like these magics on um, one of the magic things that they do is sort of like they have, they, it's called the voice, which of course is supposed to represent, it's supposed to like, I, I think is the original, the force, but a lot darker and a lot more edgier than the force. Like the force, like after you hear it a couple of times, like they say the force, <laughs> it kind of sounds kind of corny. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think that's also like one of the reasons why when in Star Wars, when they say these things, it just feels sometimes it, it just feel they're, they're saying things, but I don't feel them. And it's like the voice is not referenced that much in this movie whatsoever. Um, but there are moments like where when they when she uses it or when even Paul is able to use it because she's trying to teach Paul how to use the voice as well and teach him the like the ways of their like witch coveny ways. And um, <laughs> and it's like this dark high-pitched voice comes over them 
and like speaks to like persuade like to like enchant people and persuade them to do what they want so like they could like say like hey pick up that pick up that cup for me you know and and the people and the person if they do it in this high, like high pitched squeak high not squeaked but like high pitched kind of almost demonic voice you know you feel that like that's something that you feel it jolts you like when you first hear it um and it's very and you just it just you just feel i feel it more than i feel like when people talk when like yoda's talking about the force i don't feel the force at all like <laughs> i'm like okay the force so the dyas group is a part of like this like native uh group on arrakis on the planet dune who sort of like pray to like these worms these like large giant worm gods are they like they are their deities essentially and they're very spiritual and very sort of mysterious in nature you know they move in very mysterious ways um and sort of like mystical like very mysterious very interesting ways um that makes you just sort of want to know more i think that's what i was constantly wanting to know more about was the fremen the fremen were constantly talked about and referenced and we're this is definitely a movie from the colonizer point of view like <laughs> which i think is one of the i'm gonna get more deep into like the problematic nature of like why this is problem like the fact that we are getting because we always get stories from the colonizer point of view but i'm gonna save that for a little bit later on the fremen also seem to be people of color like i didn't see any white people in the fremen group but there are white people they're like like the atreides um and i'm gonna talk about that later as well atreides seems like it's mixed with like white and non-white care like white and non-white citizens and people um harkonnen seems like all white and then the fremen of course are all poc um people of color essentially but some of the weak points i found of this movie timothy chalamet <laughs> timothy chalamet is the weakest point and the weakest link in this movie um he really does not deserve to be paul whatsoever i think that timothy chalamet needs acting lessons personally uh, i i don't get me wrong i'm like i'm not an actor but Timothy Chalamet makes me feel nothing throughout this whole entire film. Um, he's the main character, um, and yet I don't feel anything from him. I, I feel not, he sort of just stares blankly so much through the film that it sort of concerns me sometimes. I'm like, what is he doing? I don't understand. There's this point in the uh, beginning of the film where him and his mother are sitting down at breakfast or whatever, and you know she's trying to teach him to sort of use the voice um and they're supposed they're having this like staring they're like staring at each other they're supposed to be staring at each other intensely and he's trying to focus to get the heart the voice to work to get her to like pass like you know the bread or the salt or whatever it is um he's going to try to use the voice to like you know persuade her or to like enchant her to like you know do something that he wants um something as simple as like can you pass me you know that plate of whatever um and it's supposed to be this very intense moment and like the the mom is doing her, you know the i think she's doing it well and then when she's staring at him it like it, the camera jumps back and forth between their eyes and S timothy chalamet's eyes are just kind of like there is nothing going on there, the 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 music is doing what it's supposed to do but the scene is not giving what's supposed to give it's just not <laughs> i was just like this is very weird and very awkward i wish we could like fast forward through this a little bit the moment that really annoyed me when they're like you know trying to escape and everything because they're being attacked they take this uh helicopter dragonfly this dra this dragonfly that is kind of like works as a helicopter on this technology and they're trying to use the sand, the upcoming sandstorm that has like eight mile kilometer, eight kilometer um, mile an hour winds. And they're going to try to use that to sort of get people, you know, get the people that are chasing them, Harkin the house Harkin and off their tail. And so they fly into it and they're sort of being junk, you know, jerked around. And, you know, it's really scary. I mean, it's like they're literally going into like this storm that is like almost breaking their ship apart i mean it is breaking their ship apart um and it could be very dangerous and they could die 
and the mom is sort of giving what she you know the mom is you know very active in the scene you know she's trying to keep it calm trying to keep it cool and collected and everything like that and but you know she can you can tell like she's like physically feeling sensations of worry and dread even as she's trying to stay calm and paul is just like this no emotion the body is not reacting the body is dead the face is dead i mean it's just like timothy chalamet is literally staring his way through this entire film <laughs> is he a better actor than this i don't know i just don't believe that if he was such a great actor that he would be doing this horribly in this film and have no real standout moments and no real interesting moments throughout the entirety of the film you know, i could really do without paul <laughs> in the entire film honestly he is the weakest link but he's literally the main character so he never leaves like we always see him and that's what kind of he drags the movie down for me a lot even with all this interesting things that dennis is doing his main character his main actor is like giving nothing there is one moment where timothy actually does give some emotion it's the moment that he's with the high priestess and it's a moment where he has to or else he looks stupid, you know, so he's like almost forced to give some type of emotion. He has to put his hand in this box because he's been tested because I guess, you know, men are not supposed to have access to the voice. And so they put the men through tests. I guess the voice is supposed to only be the birthright of women, which I really find interesting and I hope it's explored a little bit more. I really love the the gender politics going on in this movie are really interesting and really great. Um, but yeah, uh, he has to put his hand in his box because, you know, if he can't control his emotions, it can be dangerous. This The, the voice can be dangerous within the hands of a man um, is what the high priestess sort of says. And, you know, he puts his hand in the box and the box is supposed to, I guess it's a magical box. And it's supposed to sort of give him a sensation of pain, of like excruciating pain. And so like Timothy literally has to like, <laughs> like he has to like literally give those physical sensations and shake and like show fear and all this other things, and, uh, uh, you know, to show pain. And so that is the only moment where Timothy seems to be at all engaged in his entire body and trying to like make me feel something going back to the point i made earlier about this being a sort of colonial narrative right and this being from the perspective of the colonizers right um dennis can't help that the book does this <laughs> um he can't help that the book sort of tells the perspective from the colonizers point of view However, I feel like this is a fictional story and there is, you have certain liberties that you can take. Like I felt like in order to undercut that sense like that this is like all from the colonizer's perspective, like there could have been, and also the House of Atreides, I do have a little bit of issue with the fact that the House of Atreides is sort of like painted as like the good colonizers the understanding colonizers um and i think there is a connection there with the fact that they are sort of a mixed nation they, they do seem to have a little bit more respect um for the fremen when they get to dune but as, essentially they are essentially there to colonize and steal their natural resources um this is a colonized story but i think that um, to undercut some of that idea that it was just or some of the concepts that it was just based off a of colonizer colonizer perspective they could have had more we could have had more introspection with the fremen i feel like or just more scenes with the fremen and what they were doing i do sort of understand now that like Apparently there are some talks. Of course, the second movie has already been sort of greenlit. Um, and so part two, hopefully will be out within the next year or so. And apparently there are some like talks that it's going to be from the perspective of the Fremen, specifically Zendaya's perspective, um, her character. Um, and maybe that's why, but I've, uh, I, I just still feel like it was kind of it feels just icky you know at this point in 2021 to be getting 
stories from the colonizer's perspective. Like, even with that as well, you know, I, I hopefully this was sort of like another one of those set up for an expectation that's going to be flipped later on, but it's definitely set up as if Paul is going to be the new leader of the Fremen. I have a really big issue with this. Most because Paul, like, the Fre there's clearly some race, there's clearly race is being commented on here. The Fremen, like, they're, I've, I've yet to see a white Fremenite or, you know, whatever they call themselves, <laughs> um, you know, from the movie that I was given. You know, I, I, I didn't see white people, you know, in that group, in this group. It's like a group of POC that are all, like, some form of brown. Um, and, yeah, like, for Paul to be, like, the from the colonizer group, I guess he's from the good colon. This is why this is why I also have an issue with the good colonizer idea. Like he's from the good colonizer group, and now he's gotten wiped out because you know you know the imperial um, emperor of the universe you know sort of kicked them out and you know wiped them out or whatever and set them up um, to pretty much be like wiped out. You know now he's sort of joining like you know the POC group. <laughs> And he's going to sort of, it sort of alluded that he's going through these visions that he's going to sort of lead them. And I just have a big issue with that because they're sort of, the Fremen, the Fremen are already sort of engaged in sort of this rebellion, you know, sort of this revolutionary rebellion. And for like this white man to come in and sort of be the leader of that without even giving me solid character development of these POC characters. First of all, to do it in the first place is just kind of gross to me. But you don't even give me, be, you're already alluding to this idea. Maybe it's a setup for a flip. Because what I'm hearing is, is that Zendaya is going to be the main focus of the actual second part. So maybe uh, Paul will just be sort of a side character. And hopefully that is the case. But if Paul is going to be leading this POC group after trying to colonize them, I have an issue with that. And it's also alluded that Paul is the chosen one. He's like the Al Gaib or something like that. They keep calling him, the Fremen keep calling him um, the Al Gaib or something like that. And like the chosen one. Also, we have to start talking about white chosen ones a little bit more. Um, and it's not that I am, you know, there's always been white chosen ones, you know, white chosen ones, you know, Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, Harry Potter, the Charmed Ones, like most superhero movies, you know, they're the chosen one, like, you know, of course, Superman and stuff like that, you know, these white chosen ones, um, that are here to save the world and here to save the day. Percy Jackson is a chosen one, like all these sort of chosen one stories. And... I don't have it, you know, they, 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 they just, they're just, they're, I mean, they're, uh, it was brought up in Discord, um, essentially that I'm in, that it's like getting old now, like, I'm tired of seeing white people be the chosen one to save us, like, this white saviorism trope, um, that really needs to die, and, you know, I, I agree with that sentiment as well, like, it is getting a little bit, like, redundant at this point, and it's also just sort of, kind of gross at this point this white savior complex you know even the white chosen ones that we had before i i just felt more connected to them even if they were problematic in the fact that they were based off of this white saviorism trope you know like i really i like buffy i like harry potter i like the charmed ones i like you know percy jackson i like all of these these are some of my favorite films favorite tv shows favorite books you know, and there's something about the characters that are endearing and lovable and likable. And I think the issue with me with Paul, Timothy Chalamet, more specifically, is that he doesn't make me even like him. Like, there's nothing about him that, like, makes me believe that, like, he is the chosen one. I think Timothy is just bland and dull. I also think the fact that you know, when we talk about white saviorism or white chosen ones like Buffy, you know, it's a more broader sense, like they're trying to save the world. There is not these like really in-depth conversations about race going on at the same time. Like the charmed ones, like charmed, like there are not these in-depth or Harry Potter or whatever Percy Jackson, like there are not these in-depth sort of racial issues 
also going on along with their chosen one story which is why i think i'm even more subsense like more like accepting of their chosen one story because it's just like i can write it off as like okay well these are characters written by white people so they just made themselves you know the chosen ones of their stories which is fine people do that all the time you know that's nothing wrong with that but this movie the uh, source material in particular literally deals with racial concepts colonialism and you're still like and you're still gonna have a white chosen one white saviorism trope you know i'm side eyeing a little bit of the these things in the first film but i'm gonna go see the second film and hopefully zendaya is the true revolution like she is the one that's going to lead her people into um and i think that'll also be interesting because of the gender politics as well because we see on the opposite side and sort of colonial you know a treaty a treaties house of atreides you know the women have to work in the shadows but if zendaya and the fremen group um on the planet of arrakis of dune you know sort of gets to lead her people like that would be such an interesting contrast and i hope that he's playing with these and i hope that i'm right about my predictions that this was going to happen but i think these are things to look out for i think these are things to note let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought about dune what you guys thought about the review did you like it do you agree or disagree with a lot of concepts that i brought up today in this video as always, you know, of course, the comment section is a free and open space. I do not, you know, block, well, unless it's like, like hateful stuff. I don't like block people for their opinions. Everybody's welcome to their opinion here, to share here. Um, let me know what you think, and I'll see y'all next time for the next video.